Roosevelt shall gladly and humbly and willingly exchange with the light of my soul and our beloved Dr. Albert Einstein. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. dimensional beings need ridiculous amounts of paper that only have value to one species on one planet. Beneath the facade, what exactly are channelers asserting? What are they claiming to be true? before you in my gratitude. You may begin. Thank you. First question. How can we wake up the I am on a daily basis? Can Yeshua clarify the I am? never been separation. This is the key to understanding the kingdom of God within you. From your waking moments, state the I am with your mouth and with your heart. Make the two one. This is your daily practice. Finds happiness for you. Very often we seek outside of ourselves. We look to others to make us happy. We go shopping and buy goods and clothes to make ourselves feel happy. We strive to buy our big mansions, that amazing car, go on a dream holiday. We look outside of ourselves for happiness. We think that by pursuing these external things, we will be happy. It is appreciation of the abundance that exists in our lives. It is the peace in our hearts. It is the connection to our soul. It is the knowing of who you are. It is the process of self-acceptance. It is looking in the mirror and seeing a beautiful soul that comes from source. 
It is the gift of life. It is the air that we breathe. It is feeling connected to all things great. And all right, uh, Eric, can we can we uh, get Jesus in here? He wants uh, two hours. Oh, he wants two hours. <gasps> Conference. Oh, for the conference call. Okay, good, good, good. One for just a general, and the a second one for, for just a private. Uh, Open-ended conversation. Okay. Uh, he can definitely pull Jesus in here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Love how, how casual he makes it sound. <laughs> but also, uh, there's a gentleman here. That's what I was going to ask you before. Um, I know it's a man, mm-hmm. but he looks like a woman. I wonder who that Make is. Up, um, older man. Uh, very feminine. Really? Uh, very feminine uh, gesture. Um, it's like my eyes are playing tricks on me. Eric is sitting on the armrest of my couch, mm-hmm. back in front of me. Mr. Chris is sitting on the couch, legs crossed. Mm-hmm. Um, Jesus is standing um, off in front of the couch, kind of dangling in front of me. Uh, when he came in, he was dressed in white. Mm-hmm. He looked... I don't know, like a robe or a wrap or something. It was freeform, white. It mm-hmm. kind of emits its own light, so it doesn't really look like a crisp piece of clothing. Mm-hmm. And then when I heard Eric speaking to Jesus, kind of saying, you know, show them what a cool guy you are, is what he was saying. Mm-hmm. And I look over, and and so you see Jesus in jeans. Oh. And a uh, oh. sandal and uh, a T-shirt. Mm-hmm. And it's a scoop neck t-shirt. It's white. Yeah. It's long sleeves, kind of like a, a, a linen. Yeah. Uh, and linen. There's no markings on it or anything. Mm-hmm. There's it hangs. It's not tucked in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so. Wow. That's. I am Yeshua ben Joseph. I am love. I am compassion. I am here to teach all that is, always has been, always will be. I am here to speak today to help you remember that spirit is the answer. There is not a question. But within your egos, your egos often speak first, and this is born of confusion, which is created by the human conscious collective of fear. This does not serve well. The ego believes quite correctly that its maker may withdraw his support from it at any moment. Would you still feel comfortable using the term God? Ooh, very nice. I know. He's not without skills. <laughs> and Jesus said, uh, he's kind of talking directly to Eric, so I'm just kind of listening in. But he said that yes, he would feel comfortable using the term God. What he's uncomfortable with is the definition that's been attached to the word. Mm. It's been fragmented. So God is, is, is deemed by man as a separate entity from from each of us. Yes. Okay. Here, Charles, I'm Dr. Albert Einstein, and I'm allowed only a few precious moments. It's uh, this morning here. I am away from uh, the busy bustling North America and I choose to do that each uh, Christmas Uh, that's a warm tropical breeze blowing through my hair there so it's kind of a casual presentation today but uh, I do want to do a message for all of you from Jesus today this is his day uh, in most people's minds Uh, I think perhaps Christmas is less of an important 
celebration for me because uh, well he's on my mind all the time and we hang out together a lot so uh, this message is for all of you who are tuning into your computers perhaps you've had a, a busy shopping leading up to Christmas perhaps you know at the end of the session Well, we're with you again, dear ones. Uh, for all of you that are joining us, uh, watching us in this particular transmission, uh, we want you to know that these transmissions are very, very important in being a guiding light for you uh, towards your ascension. Uh, <clears throat> now, you have a lot of programming that guides you away from your ascension. And this is the most important message <clears throat> that we have for you today. <clears throat> your guidance from within your own heart, feelings of joy, feelings of happiness, feelings of satisfaction, are your signposts that you are on the right track. This divine remembrance returns to you and returns you into the consciousness of that which you already know in your higher selves. But because of the veil and the missions that you have carried out, your memories have been dimmed until now. Now is the time for you to rise into your function within the higher realms. Now is the time to honor the call for service to humanity. Many of you feel consumed with feelings of loss of direction or loss of life purpose. Your purpose can only be found when you serve humanity. Thin or light skin? Um. <laughs> I said it in my head and Eric goes, say it out loud. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's like a very, very tanned Caucasian. Okay, okay. So not white skin. Does he have fine, like fine features or coarser features? Um, no, more fine features. Okay. Um, and it's not rough. It doesn't look like it's been in the sun forever. Okay. Uh, what about uh, your birth? Was it an immaculate conception? Uh, he smiles and tilts his head. He said no. Okay. All right. The secret's out, Mary. <laughs> yes. Uh-oh. Um, now, um... On the channel, but they all, at the very least, assert that they can enter a state in which they can transmit information from another entity, that they're telepathic. But here's the thing. Telepathy has never been demonstrated under controlled scientific conditions. Not once. Not by shamans, witch doctors, theocrats, or new agents. It's got as much evidence in its favor as does the assertion that humans can levitate. None. And this is just the assertion of telepathy. Channelers make many more assertions on top of this whole bullshit. That uh, actually many, and a growing number, are having today, and that is, how do we know Jesus Christ ever lived? How do we know that Jesus walked in time-space history, that he was a figure of human history? Uh, when I respond to this, I like to, you know, I like to give reasons. I like to give categories. And in this context, I would give categories of responses. For example, uh, I have said in print before that depending on how far you want to go after 30-ish AD, the crucifixion, uh, we have many secular sources for Jesus. Okay, how many? and over how long a period of time? Well, if you only want to go 100 years, in other words, approximately 30 AD to 130 AD, you would have uh, more than a dozen sources. Now, now I should clarify, I'm talking about non-New Testament sources, non-New Testament. If you want to go as far as, a, let's say, 150 years, 30-ish uh, AD to 180 AD, and that's pretty fair for ancient historical synopses of history. I've argued that there are about 18 sources during that time, 
which if you only look at the non-Christian sources, Greek, Roman, Syrian, um, Jewish, you would have, you would learn about 60 things. So that would be about uh, five dozen aspects of Jesus, life, teachings, death, even his resurrection, or at least the belief in his resurrection, and some of the aspects of the earliest church. What did we actually know about Jesus Christ the man? What we don't find is this person who appears as some sort of specter within that, that historical tableau called Jesus. He doesn't have a mark at all. Now that is a dilemma for those who believe in him, because on the one hand, he supposedly overturned the, the world, it turned the world upside down and triggered off this massive movement, but on the other hand, he leaves no trace in the historical record. Say that there's no reason at all to believe that uh, the so-called Jesus of Nazareth ever existed. You've got to believe in everything I say, or go to hell, or heaven. Because, and here's why you've got to agree with me, because my mother never went to bed with anybody. And that proves the truth of what I say. Or that I, or by the way, it looks, I must have looked very dead when they took me down from the cross, but I didn't die. And that proves my point. I, I'm willing to grant it all. I'm willing to grant the Immaculate Conception first, then the Virgin Birth, then the Resurrection, and the Annunciation and the Assumption. I'm willing to grant all of it. It doesn't prove the truth of the proposition that you should take no thought for the morrow. The central doctrine of Jesus of Nazareth, take no thought for the morrow. No investment, no thrift, no care for your children, that you should abandon your family, not worry about construction, about investment, about anything. Just follow me. Bible scholars agree that the first, the first Gospels were written decades after the life of Jesus, decades. Of course, we don't have the, the original manuscripts. We have copies of copies of copies of ancient Greek manuscripts, which have thousands, literally thousands of discrepancies between them, uh, many of which show signs of later interpolation, which is to say that people added passages that, that then became part of the canon. Uh, there are whole books of the canon, like the book of Revelation, which for hundreds of years were not included because they were deemed false gospel. There are other, other whole books, like the Shepherd of Hermas, which probably haven't heard of, but for centuries it was considered part of the canon, and then was later jettisoned as false gospel. Generations of Christians lived and died, being guided by gospel that is now deemed both incomplete and, mis and, and mistaken. Think about that. So this process, this all too human process of cobbling together the, the supposed authoritative word of God, is a very precarious basis to assert the claims of Christianity. But the truth is, even if we had multiple contemporaneous claims of the miracles of Jesus, this would not be good enough. Because miracle stories abound even in the 21st century. The devotees of, of the South Indian guru Satya Sai Baba ascribe all of the miracles of Jesus to him. He reads minds, he foretells the future, he healed, he raises the dead, he was born of a virgin. It, Satya Sai Baba is, is not a fringe figure. You might not have heard of him, but he, they had a birthday party for him a few years ago and a million people showed up. There are vast numbers of people who think he's a living God. And so Christianity is predicated on the claim that miracle stories, exactly of the kind that today surround a person like Satya Sai Baba, become especially credible when you place them in the pre-scientific religious context of the first century Roman Empire, decades after their supposed occurrence, as attested to by copies of copies of copies of ancient Greek and largely discrepant manuscripts. A, a ridiculous and immoral proposition that as C.S. Lewis so cleverly, and I must say for him, very honestly puts it, means that the man must either have been a maniac, a sick man, an evil man, or he must have believed that the world was coming immediately to an end and that he was commanded to announce this fact to the deluded Bronze Age inhabitants of Palestine.